Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how my power fist works, how to print it, and how to assemble it. All parts of the fist can be 3D printed, which means it can be scaled, just like my previous project, the Power Claw. Honestly, this was a very challenging project. I spent a lot of time trying to combine several aspects. Compatibility with small printers, ease of assembly, support-free printing, durability, and lightweight design. Additionally, I included two features that I hadn't initially planned. The quick release mechanism and the ability to lock the fingers in a clenched position. For example, I tested printing the fist at 80% size and it fit my wife perfectly since she is 155 centimeters tall. I am also announcing a giveaway for the fist featured in this video. You can find more details about the giveaway in the video description. The files for printing are optimized for printers with a build volume of 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters. The main frame has a version split into two parts. A solid version can be printed on larger printers, such as those from Bamboo Lab. The external armor is also divided into parts for printing on small printers, medium-sized printers, and there are also files for solid armor, in case you have an exceptionally large printer. The required number of parts is indicated directly in the file name. For example, X8 means you need to print 8 pieces. The files are designed for printing without supports, however some files, such as the finger parts, have built-in supports that will need to be removed before assembly. Spring files are optional. These springs make bending the fingers harder, but straightening them easier. They can also be replaced with metal springs, and I will include a link in the video description where you can purchase them. I recommend printing the springs using PETG. I recommend printing with a minimum of two walls and 10% infill. For printing at 100% scale, you will need at least two kilograms of filament, but it's better to buy three kilograms to have some extra. Don't forget to configure the bridge settings as the design is intended for printing without supports. As I mentioned earlier, the main frame part is provided in a split version and needs to be glued together. Moving forward, I will use the solid version of the part. Apply glue to one half of the frame and join the two halves together. Then leave the glue to dry. We start by gluing the parts so they can dry while we assemble other components of the fist. Glue the components of the lower part of the armor together. These are easy to distinguish as they have threaded holes. Moving forward, I will use the solid single piece version of the armor. Repeat the same process for the upper part of the armor. Let's start assembling the fingers. Insert the gear into part A1. Then insert the gear into part A2. Slide the cover onto the rod, making sure that the protrusion on the rod is on the opposite side. Insert the rod into the assembly. Place the spring plate into part A2. Next, insert part A3 and press down on the rod until it clicks into place. Insert part A2 into part A1. Then fit the rod into the grooves. Make sure everything moves smoothly. Fully bend the finger and insert it into the guide rail. Let's assemble finger B. 
insert the gear into part B1. Slide the cover onto the rod just like for finger A. Insert the rod into part B. Place the small rod into the grooves of part B1. Now insert the spring into the grooves of part B1. By the way, metal springs also can be used. I bought them on AliExpress with a thickness ranging from 0.1 millimeters to 0.2 millimeters and a length of one meter, which is sufficient. In the description, I will include information about the required spring length for each finger. With a spring thickness of 0.1 millimeters, the spring slightly helps to straighten the fingers while still allowing them to bend without much difficulty. A spring thickness of 0.2 millimeters almost fully straightens the fingers on its own, but bending them becomes more challenging, especially if you extend your fist forward with your palm facing upward, as the weight of the fingers makes it harder to close them. You can try using plastic springs first and then decide whether it's worth buying metal ones. Metal springs do not deform over time like plastic ones. Therefore, with plastic springs, I recommend storing them with the fingers kept straight. Also, keep in mind that if you scale down the design, you'll need to choose springs with a smaller width. At 100% scale, I use springs with a width of 20 millimeters. For example, at 80% scale, springs with a width of 15 millimeters would be suitable. It is definitely not advisable to use springs thicker than 0.1 millimeters. Insert the spring plate into part B1, then insert the rod and spring into part B2 and connect it to part B1. Press down on the rod to secure it. Next, connect part B2 to part B3, and again press down on the rod to lock it in place. Check that everything moves smoothly. Repeat the same steps for the remaining fingers. Now, let's proceed with assembling the hand frame. Insert the fixator pole into its designated slot by pressing it in. Check to ensure it moves freely. Take the fixator and position it so that the fixator pole aligns with the groove in the fixator. Press down on the fixator to secure it in the guide rails. Ensure that the fixator moves smoothly along the guide rails. This fixator allows you to lock the fingers in a bent position, giving your fingers a chance to rest without keeping them under tension. Insert the gears into their designated positions. The gear for finger D needs to be installed from the inside. The order of rail installation is important. First, install rail C and push it all the way in. Bend the finger and secure the rod. Then, while holding rail C in its maximum position, press the finger down so it fits into the grooves. Part C1 should be parallel to the top surface of the frame, as if the finger is fully straightened. Next, repeat the same process for finger B2, then finger B, followed by finger D, and finally install finger A. Finger movement is controlled by manipulating the rods. Additionally, you can lock the fingers in a clenched position by sliding the fixator pull. Make sure the fixator locks align with the grooves on the rails when the fingers are fully clenched. If they don't align, try reinstalling the problematic finger.
Now we can proceed with assembling the remaining parts of the frame. Insert the hand holders into the grooves Then secure them by pressing in the fixators. Next, screw on the nut. If the nut is too tight, apply some silicone grease and twist the nut back and forth to loosen it. Take the second part of the frame and insert the lock into its designated slot. Connect the two parts of the frame, aligning them along the guideline on the model. Secure them by tightening four B1 bolts. Use a printed handle for easier tightening. Next, attach the third part of the frame and fasten it using another four B1 bolts. Attach the side panel to the frame and secure it with two B2 bolts. Insert the strap into its designated groove. Then place the lower armor onto the frame and fasten it with four B2 bolts. Two bolts on the top and two on the bottom. Adjust the hand holders by tightening the nut. This only needs to be done once. Finally, you can try on the fist for the first time. Place your hand inside the fist, insert the strap into the lock, and feel for the rails with your fingers. Take the quick release button and insert your hand into the fist along with the button. With your other hand, straighten the fingers. Compress the spring on the button and insert it into the slot ensuring the spring is properly aligned within the slot. It might be tricky to do blindly, but I'm confident you'll manage. Test the quick release system by tightening the strap securely and pressing the button. Screw in two B3 bolts into the middle holes of the upper armor. Then, glue the skull into the square slot. When wearing the fist, I recommend using a long sleeve, a wristband, or a soft padding under the strap, as the plastic strap may cause discomfort during use. Install the upper armor by aligning it with the side panel and pressing down firmly on the armor. Secure it by screwing in two B4 bolts. That's it. Your fist is ready. By default, the files are designed for the right hand. If you want to print a left hand fist, you'll need to mirror all the files, including the bolts. To disassemble the fingers, use a hex key to lift the rod. Remove the last phalanx of the finger, then use the hex key to lift the second rod. All other parts can be disassembled in reverse order of assembly.